All right, grand final edition of True Footy Podcast with a well a debutant actually. You're not a debutant to the channel, Dylan. No. Um, because you've been on plenty of live streams. But for those who just follow the True Footy Podcast, welcome. Thank you. How you feeling? Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um. Well, look. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling? Yeah. That was probably a bad question to ask. A little bit dusty. It's not a bad question, considering he's a Geelong fan and they've just made the grand final. Yeah, maybe. Which is largely the premise of you being on here today yep. as well, yep. um, which is good. So, yeah, we'll probably do a little potty about the um, the grand final, obviously. So, But before that, we do have to talk about our sponsors, Manscaped.com. Are you a Manscaped, Dylan? Yep. Well, yeah, cool. Nice. Real tidy junk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you would love Manscaped's new products, the Lawnmower 3.0, just been launched in Australia. Nice. And, uh, you know, with this premium battery, you can actually shave your nuts for 90 minutes without stopping, if you wanted to. I don't know why you would want to, but pretty impressive when you think about it. <laughs> also, do you ever feel like when you're, when you're shaving your junk that, uh, that you can't quite see everything down there? Well... <laughs> They have an no, LED no, light. I was going to say, there's an <laughs> LED light. I do like shaving in dark things. Yeah. Like <laughs> you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Well, that's good. Um, well, it's not good if you like it when it's dark and dank, but the uh, LED light will help illuminate your nuts as well. So um, the reason I'm talking about these things is because thanks to manscaped.com, you can get 20% off their products using the code TRUEFOOTY20. So if you're listening or watching this and uh, you need tidy junk like Dylan, go to the manscaped.com. Do True yourself footy. a favour. Yeah, absolutely. Crikey, time to shave those balls. Nice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that tied in nicely. Yep. Cool. All right, well, that was brilliant. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk grand final, boys. Oh, actually, let's talk prelim first because that, um, that obviously happened. The Friday night, Port Adelaide versus Richmond. That was a belter of a game. You boys didn't catch it either. Yeah, I'm spewing. Yeah. That's the one I missed out of the two. Like, yeah. It looks like it was definitely the better of the two games. Yeah. Kind of three pissers over here. We are, we're all on the beers all weekend. <laughs> um, <laughs> two of you yep. missed the, the first prelim. But it was a really good game. Obviously, we, um, we live streamed the other one, but it was it was more or less goal for goal all day. Uh-huh. And um, it was a bit of a heartbreaker for Port. They, well, they trailed pretty much most of the, at least the second half. But... Um, Felt bad. You know, this is the first time actually that I think two, the two hosts, the um, home prelim teams. Actually, it's no. So it's the first time that the grand finalists are teams that lost in week one. Both of them. Huh? That's the first time that's happened. I'm not sure when was the last time both home prelim teams lost as well and got knocked out as well. If ever, I don't don't, I don't know. Ever. Yeah, probably never. It's, it's been, been a while my guess. If, if it hasn't, but yeah. Um, but they threw everything at Richmond. Um, Brad Ebert's retiring. That makes me sad. Remember when Brady played for West Coast? That seems like a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, concussion. Went back bravely with the ball. Oh, yeah. We'll turn off the AC. That's a good idea. <laughs> um, how do you think Port Adelaide will reflect on this season, having gone 14-3, and three, win their first final, get a home prelim? Obviously, they'll be gutted, but overall, considering where they were, where do you think Bush will? I think them? they'd be pretty happy, considering going into the year, it was do or die for Ken Hinckley. They mm. probably, if they had a shit year this year, they probably would have made some tough decisions regarding some guys like Boak and other older guys that might not have been there for the next go around if they hadn't shown what they'd shown this year, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's true. Would you, as a Geelong man, Dylan, would you have preferred to play Port in the grand final? Maybe purely for like the... The fact that we spanked them in 07. True. And it's like, it'll give like the heebie jeebies. Like, True. going back into that, as a, as a port player, there's no way that you wouldn't like wake up grand final day and think about, like, man, remember the last time this happened? Like, <laughs> even though, like, you probably weren't involved, like, I think yeah. that that sort of like mental side of it would definitely play a factor. So, yeah. Or I guess it also maybe it would have driven them to have like retribution as well. Yeah. Um, True. You know, a chance to overcome that win yep. by 120 points, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, like, I think they can be pretty comfortable knowing that they threw absolutely everything at this season. Like, <laughs> so they were 14 and three and um, won their first final. So like, usually that's like you should make the grand final from there. But they're coming up against an absolute champion team in Richmond, the informed team of the past four years. Yeah, yeah, um, literally in the middle of a dynasty. So. <laughs> The, the, I, I think they can have take solace from the fact that they 
it was a close game. They, they didn't leave anything out in the field. And in the end of the day, they just weren't quite as good as yeah. Richmond because probably no one really is. Um, where to from here? They're a young team. Well, they're not that young, actually. They've got a Young little, and old. They've got a bit of a yeah, contrast. But they do. They have a weird sort of, uh, what's the word, duality in their team. That's probably not the right word. But, um, yeah, a lot of older, experienced guys doing well and then some of the best youth in the league as well. What do, what do you think about Port next year? Either of you? I think they probably make a couple of little tweaks, like in the off-season, like maybe try and look into like some South Australian talent that might want to come back. Yep. Even though they're probably going to be competing quite hard with Adelaide for that because Adelaide's got a glut of space and money probably f- to lure those sort of people. Mm. But Ray Tool a little maybe sort of, yeah. Yep. Yeah, fair enough. I think... Can give it another crack next year. It's a tough one where if like, their older players drop off, which there's no evidence that they will, but if they do, yeah. then they might be in strife even though they've got good youth. Um, it's not like contrast it with someone like Brisbane who we'll talk, touch on shortly. Like So much of their quality is driven by the guys in that right age bracket whereas Port's a little bit lopsided yeah. like that so yeah it'll be an interesting one I, I, I'd say next year you'd put it down as a contender but yeah, but, yeah. Maybe the other prelim though deal I was just um, going to say quickly sorry. what about Hinkley do you think like obviously they're going to keep him now that he's had a good year but mm. probably a shorter term extension probably my guess like a one or two year sort of extension that's a good question yeah how much has he restored the faith considering yeah. he was on a knife's edge to get sacked well yeah, I mean that's what he's I'm been vindicated to, yeah. and they've been vindicated for um for backing him in because they yeah they, like last year Port were like or Kosh was like yeah we'll we'll get a new coach well, we have to make the finals that's the pass mark and then they miss finals and he doesn't the, get the final, only like, reason they didn't fire him at the end of last year is the same reason Freo didn't fire Ross mm-hmm. Lyons it was going to cost them too much money and they wouldn't have been able to pay a replacement dick that's a good point yeah <laughs> yeah most of the replacements don't get paid in dick so they don't accept that as a currency but um, <laughs> credits will do fine <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, that's, that's throwing me again. I have no idea what I was about to say. No, no. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm giving Port too much credit. Maybe it was just the financial. They didn't sack him. But um, other, the other prelim deal, uh, we were obviously on the live stream, but what did you think of your boys getting over the line against Brisbane? What did you think of the game? Well, it wasn't that good of a game, really. It wasn't, was yeah. it? No, no. no. Yeah. Um, I was expecting a bit more of a battle. Um, but I think Brisbane obviously just a little bit too young. I think like the next few years are going to be big for them. Mm. So Geelong having like the old legs that we have in our team, like cease the day. This is good because um, although like I say this regularly about Geelong, like I don't know how good they are. Then every year they seem to like mm-hmm. exceed my expectations. Yeah. Um, but I think shortened year helped us. I yeah. think playing like an inexperienced side like Brisbane helped us. Don't know how we match up with Richmond. Yeah, um, that would be. I, an I issue think one. that's that's a tough one, but I think like I, I hope it's a good game. I think like the battle of the midfield is gonna be a nice thing to watch. Like yeah. watching like Dangerfield and um, Dusty. Yeah, go ahead. That's ahead. gonna be like a, a good like a grand final uh, <laughs> spectacle to watch. So yeah, no nah, average game. I, it was that. I'd be interested to see how long Dusty and Danger actually spend in the middle because they've both been playing a lot of that forwardy they sort of forward yeah. regularly, don't yeah. they? So that would be interesting. Yeah. It's danger, the forward move at the moment seems to be working. They've got like yeah. three forward targets now that you have to worry about, and obviously Hawkins in the form of his life. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on Brisbane, I guess, a little bit before we move on to the actual grand final. But you, you touched on it as well. They're a young team, not a lot of experience, but they're, two years in a row they've gone top two. Um, 14 and 3 as well I believe this year and two home finals out of the last four home finals they've played they've only won one of them albeit against Richmond and then I, I would describe their performance like it actually shocked me like uh, I, I I was convinced this was going to be a ripping game yeah hmm. I didn't expect it was almost a bit meek the way they kind of rolled over yeah um, so yeah I mean finals performance is at the moment not not too crash hot but that being said like you said, they're a young team, inexperienced, and you can't expect them to be really good in finals from the get-go. And Richmond lost a series, like, th- well, three years in a row they went out in week one before mm. and then missed the finals and then won yeah. the flag, so... They'll learn from it. Yeah. yeah. It's a definitely a big learning experience from, like, young guys like McCluggage, Hipwood, yeah. Barry. Yeah. If, well, Neil's had some finals experience when Freo didn't suck. So, yeah. So he's got that going for him. But beyond that, there's probably not too many guys on that team. Well, Birchall, obviously, with the free PD's got True. that experience, but on the whole... Harris Andrews, he's 
this true. is probably his first or second finals campaign. Well, second. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, like, in, and before last year, like, very few of them would have played in any finals. Yeah, yeah that's very true. Um, where, uh, the other, I wonder if there's a part of this as well where, like, do you think, I think we're pretty comfortable that Brisbane's going to be a good team for a while, but do, is there a sense that this could have been their year? Like, this is yeah. the year that the season was in Queensland and they're going to get... Potentially a home grand final. Like, I've definitely had the feeling they've blown it. That sort of a yeah. bit of the thoughts I've had. Yeah. This was the best opportunity they've probably going to have to win a flag. Because logically their team, like you would look at that list and go, nah, they're good for the next five to eight years. Yeah. Like well, there's enough quality there, but it doesn't always happen like that. Especially with the, it sounds like they're going to have some ins in trade period. True, yeah. Absolute destination club yeah. now. Joey Danaher might be heading up to Brisbane. Yeah. And um, Trelaw. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if they get both of those guys? Shh. That's I, don't, I don't know if I'll pull off Trelaw, but yeah. um, or recruit him. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, wet grand yeah. final potentially. Yep. Did you say ninety four percent? Yeah, according to some post I saw on Reddit, apparently. But yep. it was like a real early forecast. It was like eight nine days out. Yeah, okay, and I barely yeah. trust the weather guys. Fucking two days out. Yeah, mm. that's that's true. Oh yeah, that's uh, they're probably Geelong and Richmond are probably two good sides to have if it's going to be a wet. Grand final. Thing is, it's not like Melbourne wet. It's going to be like humid, Brisbane-y, tropical wet, yeah. which is a bit different. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, I would. I would actually rate Geelong's chances more if it's wet. Yeah. Huh? It might. It might just slow down. It would like definitely slow down like the people like Dusty, um, True. and sort of take take the speed out of the game. And then that's when like guys like Joel Selwood can just yeah. like. I, I, I would rate us more in the wet than I would <laughs> like a, a beautiful day where like. Richmond are just so good at that spread and that, that like, attacking. Dustin Martin, like, yep. breaking a tackle, running 15 metres and then kicking at 60 metres. Mm. That's the mm. stuff that you just don't want. And, True. like, if they get up and about, it's going to be a long day. On the flip side of that, Hawkins is your number one, like, asset this year. Mm. And he's kind of taken out of it if it's if it's a wet, slippery night. Very true. Do you know what I mean? So, Very true. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be interesting. Uh, one thing I like about this grand final is that it's um, genuinely neutral. So, obviously, yeah. we touched on it, it could have been... Um, Brisbane hosting the grand final and that's not to say it's unfair because this is actually the first this is the first neutral grand final in a long time so the 2016 technically was neutral the Bulldogs hosting Sydney because you can't really say the Bulldogs they never play home games at the G they, they mm. play a handful of games at the G Aye. in a season so I'd say that's pretty neutral uh, but before that you have to go back to like 2011 and even then that was Collingwood and Geelong Geelong's last flag good omen but even then, you could argue Collingwood's definitely got more of a home ground advantage than Geelong at the G. Mm. Geelong don't like playing at the G. So, but uh, here at the Gabba, it's going to be an actual <laughs> neutral game. Yeah. And I think from a spectator's point of view, oh, that is good, I guess. Like, mm. I, I'm glad there is no home ground advantage. It's just going to be... Um, Pure, unadulterated football. Yeah, yeah, amongst <laughs> other things. But um, Richmond did slaughter them some, like, six weeks ago or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. A metric on though, I think. So think so. Yeah. Geelong sort of going into a form slump around that time. Yeah. So I don't know how much to read into that, to be honest. I'm sure Geelong. Well, looking at the Geelong that side that's just played the two finals, they look ready to go. Yeah. yeah. Don't they? Um, fifth time lucky, actually. <laughs> they've been eliminated from their last four prelims. I'd probably be inclined to go Richmond. Like they've just got the runs on the board the past few years. They've mm. been in this moment. They've won the last few times they've played Geelong, I believe. Yeah. They've yeah. sort of had their number. Yeah. Even the prelim last year, everyone proclaimed that the re- final and Richmond won it reasonably convincingly from memory. It was a good. It was a good yeah. game. It was a good game. They, I think they won by like twenty points in the end. Yeah. Um, so it was. It was a real ominous all that one. But yeah, you're right. So these are actually the best two teams over the last two years. I would say, like yeah. Geelong were top last year, should have made a grand final. They kind of bottled it in the first qualifying final against Collingwood. Um, so th- this is probably the grand final should have happened last year and. Yeah, Geelong getting rewarded for being one of the best teams over a long period of time. What about you, Dylan? What are your instincts? Well, I would say Geelong because I want to. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But, um, yeah, it's just like Richmond or Richmond, and it's it's hard to, like, mm. see how they don't play well. Yeah. Like, they're, they're going to play well. Yeah, oh, like, for sure. Like, they've done it, so like, so many times now. So, yeah, I think it's – I hope it's a good game. But um, it's, it's just hard to imagine Richmond not playing well and not being hmm. the side that we've seen in the last couple of years. So Yeah, for sure. 
How much, as a Geelong fan, I know you're a fairly casual fan, what what, what would a premiership mean to you? Because it's been nine years since Geelong last won. Yeah. And a fair bit of adversity between chockies, like a lot of the final stigma, like everyone's bagged them out as chokers and all that sort of stuff, so you'd get that True. vindication, I guess. True, yeah, yeah, that would be a big middle finger yeah. to the rest of the community. If, uh, yeah. if Geelong get a flag, <laughs> despite being labelled chokers some three weeks ago, wasn't it? <laughs> Against sport, so, yeah. Every free, more like every three weeks they're labelled yeah, chokers. Yeah, yeah true. Um, what, what would it flag mean to you? Yeah, um, it's a good question, but I've kind of, we've kind of been spoilt with flags over mm. like recent times. I know like 11 years does sound a lot, but like you don't have to cast your mind back too far and to remember like sure. 7, 9 and, and 2011. Yeah. So we've been pretty spoiled in that sense. Obviously everyone likes to see a flag. Um, and like I said, I'm, I am very casual these days. Um, but I, I mentioned to you last to you last night that it's more about like because my dad is a diehard fan, mm. so it's more about like seeing his reaction and seeing like, yeah, and, and it's for him. So um, it would be cool to see, and it'd be cool to talk to my dad about it and get involved. He tries to talk about footy all the time with me, and I just have nothing to give. <laughs> much hey, like this podcast, I was gonna say, <laughs> here you are on a podcast now. <laughs> <talking> about <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just doing this for business development. It is all about getting my brand out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go sub to Colwell as well. Link in the description. Yeah, um, it definitely won't mean what an yeah. Eagles flag that Eagles flag meant sure. to you. That, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it would be cool to see. I'd love it, obviously, mm. um, but for different reasons compared to what an Eagles flag meant to you. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, sweet. Um, and meanwhile, I've been waiting my entire life on. Yeah, well, you've been <laughs> waiting a while. Yeah. Nah, I'm just kidding. You're all right. You're all right. Um, this, nah, this time's the time. <laughs> this is actually, um, I don't know if we mentioned it, this is Dangerfield's first grand final. So for a guy who's had such a successful career. Yeah, um, that's interesting. He's, he's going to go down as a champion of the game, I'd say. But this is the first time at, year, at the age of 30 that he's going to get a grand final. I wonder, wonder what kind of performance we'll see from him if he'll, I mean, if it's a wet, scrappy day. They'll probably you'd probably chuck him in the guts. I think mm. you'd have to. You might do that anyway because it's a grand final. But yeah. I don't know. Just get him involved. Um, yeah, especially if it's wet and stuff like. Because you alluded to like Sell would be able to just crash and bash in the wet stuff. Danger be, has those attributes as well. He's in yeah, sure. physical base, so you'd yeah, you'd athlete. want to use that opportunity to yeah, yeah. And just make Gary Rowan step up in the forward line a bit because he's yeah he can play a bit of that role as well. Yeah, they've athletic, got- good sized, fast fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Good, good overhead mark as well. Yeah, yeah, there's a few dimensions to that Geelong forward line when they're all when they're all like available. It's yeah. and it's sort of interesting to see how like Brian Myers has really carved himself out of spot. True, like, it's hard to imagine the side without him now. Yeah, and he like he doesn't have like the crazy attributes that you see from like a danger field or anything like that. But mm. like he's really like made uh, his spot his in that yeah. team. So um, it, like I don't know. I just when I watch I, I when I watch him play I like I. I watch him as like I watch him, and it's interesting to see how like he's really carved out his little niche. Yeah, no, that's pretty true. I think like the small forward role is really important. Every every good Premiership team pretty much has a gun small forward. That's very like, true. And yeah, Grime Wise is a very good talent. Yeah, terrible kick. Well, great kick. Good terrible kick, motion. but the terrible action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. disgusting. Um, could be the last time we see Gary Ablett, and I'm say so could be. I'm very confident he will retire. Harry Taylor as well. Probably. If, if you get a flag, you, you yeah. surely go out on top. stage. I mean, the chance of going back to back in this Geelong team is, is not likely. So I think if you saw that, you'd be like, "Yep, yeah, no, I'm done." Yeah, that's true. Um, I haven't given my tip yet. I'm gonna. I would love Geelong to win because. Um, yeah, I'd. Pref- I want Geelong to win, but yeah. Brain's telling me Richmond, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it would be good to see Dangerfield with a flag. Um, frankly, I'm over Richmond being so dominant. <laughs> um, so I think that's my motivation. But I actually think Richmond's going to win. I think Richmond yeah. are the ultimate big game team. Obviously, they bottled the prelim like two years ago. Um, man, that was only two years ago. That's crazy. But it's hard to see them. <sighs> but, I mean, Geelong was so red hot right now as well. Mm. Like, Geelong pulled out a very strong performance against Brisbane. So if they come out like that... They could win. But I'll, I'll say Richmond by a goal. And on, on that, if Richmond do win and they go three out of four, where do they stack up? We talked about this on the live stream, but just for the podcast, like where do they stack up against the great teams? Well, we sort of had like obviously the two teams that succeeded in free pating in like the 21st century, like yep. the early Brizzy team and that Hawthorne team. They're probably one and two, however you distinguish them. Mm-hmm. But then there was three and four, the Geelong of like seven, nine, eleven versus yeah. this yeah. Richmond team. That's probably you'd give. I'd probably give the edge to that Geelong team just 
you, the you names you can rattle like, off from that team are just like ridiculous. The, um, was it 08 where they had the wing, Un- the wing streak? Like, yeah, yeah. Just, you just pretty much won every game other than the Grandy in one other game or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. That, yeah. That to me is like the most dominant team that I've seen. The 08 mm. team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. I think Geelong's best football was actually 08 when they didn't win the flag. Wow. Well, yeah, 07 was a dominant. That guy named well. Stuart Jew ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, <laughs> That was a great grand final, though. But yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree. But you got to put them up there, though. Like you have, yeah. to, put, you have to put Richmond in, this, in a serious conversation. And there's yeah. no actual reason they're not done. Like if yeah. they if they get a three peat, then let's say next year, yeah. which you know could ease not could easily happen, but yeah. like that is a possibility. Which is a four out of five yeah, at that like, point. We're considering where their list is. They're not really slowing down, are they? Huh. Does, it, does it does it take time to realise these kind of things? Though, like when when. Hawthorne were going through like their like their three peat. Mm. Will we having these conversations, or is it now after the fact that we're sitting here going, "Yeah, God, that's a good team." Good mm. point. And like, yeah. is it going to take the same for Richmond? Like, is, is it going to be five years from now when they maybe they slow down a little bit and we go back and think like, "Man, that Richmond team was good." Yeah, damn. <laughs> like, like it always takes after the fact. Mm. True. Yeah. So I think that in the conversation, and I think time will tell, and and we'll sit here and a few years later, and we'll talk about like how good that Richmond team was, and like. Yeah. The, the many like facets of their side that was just so dominant true it's they're really a system team in that like on talent I think they're by far the least talented mm. um, and I say that with respect the least talented of any of these teams we just mentioned that Hawthorne yeah. team um, Brisbane and Geelong all absolutely star studded right. I don't think there's Richmond side star studded nah they're just very very good like you got Dusty at the top um, Presti is very good. Yeah, like they're Cochin. all very good players, but not amazing. Dusty's yeah. probably the only real star in that team. Though. Yeah, mm. now that Rance is gone, I'm inclined to agree. And obviously, Rewalt's slowed down. Yeah. Um, Bashar Hooli's probably one of the best, if not the best, in his position. Um, Tom Lynch is very good, but you're right. Other than mm. that, it's a series of very good role players. Your Jack Grahams, your Shy Boltons, Noah Bolter stood up this year. Dylan Grimes is pretty pretty mm. elite as well, but. Yeah, they're not star. They're not household names like right. some of those Geelong players and stuff. Yeah, like that. I mean you've got like Bartel, Ablett, like mm. um, Harley, Chapman, like, yeah, Scarlett. Like, you think back and there's guns, and then you go through that Hawthorne side, like mm. and you got like Buddy, Rioli, yeah. like you just, any of those guys, right. and you try to do that with Richmond, and it's funny because I you don't I haven't thought about this until we just talk about it, but yeah, you think like Dusty. And then, like, you wouldn't even really put, like, Cochin up there. Like, no, he's, I don't he's, think he's, he's just a good yeah. solid player. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't say, like, oh, man, they were guns. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. Very true. He, I mean, he, he is a standout in a way that he's, like, a, a big moment, like a leader. And, uh, sorry, a big moment player, a leader, will step up in big occasions. So he is a champion in a sense. Yeah. But in terms of his output over the course of a year, like, he will never get close to the Brownlow again. No. Mm. Like, I mean, he's 1-1, to be fair. Yeah. But that was well before Richmond became this yeah. good. So. Yeah. And it also involved a bit of shenanigans from Essendon. Yeah, well, that was a fact. Oh, yeah, cr- credit where it's due. He's yeah. rightfully a, a Brownlow medalist. Yeah, but, um, for sure. But, like, since then, since Richmond's been dominant, Cochin has been... He stood up where he's needed to. He hasn't been dominant. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, are we all saying Richmond? Wait, sorry, where did you actually sit? Did you say Richmond? You said Geelong, you but said you Geelong. sort of yeah. acknowledge that Richmond's probably the yeah. favourite. It's much like what Bush has said. My heart says Geelong, then my head says, like... Yeah, it's hard to mm. look against Richmond. What about Normie? I'll go Dusty. Ooh. I mean, he doesn't even need to be best on, and he'll win it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So was straight out robbed. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Basher Hawley had thirty touches and was like the most impactful touches guy too. Playing off a half back. Yeah, I, I really feel like the half back role is like one of the most important roles as well. I know we spoke about half forwards and every good team has a half forward yeah I feel like ever since like the early 2000s every good side has had a gun half back yeah yep. launching attacks from the from the back half now is it's very like very I feel like Cor- uh, this is gonna be so fucking people are gonna click this and be like oh my god he's such a Geelong fan <laughs> like I feel like Cor Enright changed that whole thing yeah I feel like well he was the first guy that I noticed that was like a midfielder mm. put on half back that was like yeah. was attacking like, it and would go, go from that yeah that's true like you you they rec- have sorry. They have halfback flankers now who don't defend. Right. <laughs> nah. Do you know what I mean? Like Basha Huli, not not knocking his defensive game, but he's in that side to attack. Yeah. yeah. And it was the same with Lewis Jetto, who's now forced out of the side. Matty Suckling, Suckling, Suckling is a really good example of that. Actually, um, in that Hawthorne side yeah. when they D- rose up. Daniel Rich, even when they put him back. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. But so. like these days, you get 
defensive minded half forwards that are trying to yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. nullify the it's true half the back yeah. Half, but like yeah. it's like about switching roles like yeah. <laughs> yeah you literally have a forward who's more defensive than a back because, they're, because yeah. their half back is just, is like yeah. attacking and just running off and, they, and they'll chuck someone back and be like just stay with him interesting yeah yeah, yeah. Nah, that's, that's yeah, the forward concept. tagger, yeah. We just had good content. Who would have thought? Actual football analysis, yeah, boys. Man, High we, five. We left it late, but far out. We did well. <laughs> really pulled this podcast Only together. podcast 62 or three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, that was good. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. We'll keep it concise yep. because uh, we have to get this potty up fairly quickly because of the nature of uh, grand final week. But um, Brownlow medal night. No point really going into too much analysis because, it's as I said, this will be up after the thing. Are we thinking Lockie Neal? Yeah. Do you think he's argument? a lock? Key Neal? Lucky Neal. Nice. I haven't slept much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Petrarca is the one I'll be sort of watching going. Jack Steele is one cool. I think that's worth watching, yeah, my could, personal yeah. opinion. It's it's hard. Sometimes I don't know how he how he polls. Like some people don't get rewarded, especially uh-huh. if you're a defensive tackling machine like uh-huh. Big Tom, which he is. So yeah. Big but he's Tom. accumulated a bit of the pill this year. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. He's been he's been really good. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, all right. Well, that's it, guys. Make sure you tune into our grand final live stream. Uh, all of us will be on it, plus oh, yeah. Druzy, um, potentially Druzy's brother as well. So um, get around it, join us. We're going to kick it off. I'm not sure what time yet, but probably a couple of hours before the game. Make a bit of a day of it. Um, so get around it. Thanks for all your support this year. We're going to be doing more content through the trade period, draft period. Like, True Footy doesn't stop for quite a while yet. Um, and Cold World will ramp up, I'm guessing, yeah. too, boys. Yes, check out yeah. Cold World. My man Dylan's podcast. I say my man Dylan's. It's also mine. We do it together. Um, it's a joint venture. It is a joint <laughs> venture, yeah. Um, so go check that out. Link in the description. And also Outback Hoops Experience. I yeah, said right buddy. This time. Nailed it. NBA podcast for content. Yep. Um, for Off-season content. stuff. <laughs> Off-season stuff coming up. We'll probably be talking the tra- uh, dr- draft that's coming up. Bit cool. of free agency, all that fun sort of shit. Probably similar to what we'll be doing yes. on True Footy. Awesome. So, yeah, go check it out. Thanks for listening, guys. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.